We have two persistent weak layers in the bottom half of our snowpack that have been producing very large avalanches over the past couple of weeks. These facet and faceted crust layers formed during prolonged droughts we had in early December and early January. We're going to give a brief tour of some of the recent avalanche activity and talk about some of the conclusions we can draw looking into the stormy week ahead. While our persistent slab activity extends well back into December, I'm going to start on January 30th. The Northwest Mountains picked up as much as 20 inches of snow on Saturday, spurring a large cycle in the Ruby Range and surrounding mountains. Snow loading on persistent weak layers several feet thick is an easy recipe for large avalanches. Here are a few examples. On Sunday, January 31st, the sun came out and temperatures warmed into the 30s and 40s in the mountains. We saw another round of large persistent slab avalanches in the Northwest Mountains, this time caused by rapidly settling slabs and small loose snow avalanches acting as triggers. On the night of February 3rd, we saw intense snow loading from a heavy snow squall. The mountains picked up one to two inches of snow water equivalent, equating to 10 or 20 inches of relatively dense snow over the span of about eight hours. This time the snowfall was better distributed across the entire forecast area. The result was another avalanche cycle in both the Northwest and Southeast mountains at all elevations, though not as exciting as we anticipated. On the night of February 5th, we saw up to 17 inches of low density snow in the Northwest mountains and three to six inches in the Southeast mountains with 0.2 to 0.9 inches of snow water equivalent. More importantly, winds increased out of the northwest with alpine winds blowing 20 to 30 miles per hour and gusting into the 50s. This spurred our most destructive and most impressive avalanche cycle of the season. The wheels really fell off the bus with this event. In some cases, slabs connected across multiple start zones in spectacular fashion. We saw about 10 very large slides that snapped trees and put huge amounts of debris in valley bottoms. We estimate the slide off of Ruby Peak was close to D4 in size. Again, activity was widespread across both the Northwest and Southeast Mountains, particularly near and above treeline. Winds continued to transport snow on Saturday and Sunday, triggering more large avalanches throughout the weekend. We have a snowy week in the forecast, with a decent pulse on Tuesday night and the strongest pulse coming in on Friday into Saturday along with a good chance for a decent wind event on Saturday. Weak layers will continue to be stressed and continue to fail naturally. Here are a few things to keep in mind going into this stormy pattern. First, avalanches are breaking unexpectedly wide and can run much further than you might expect. The slide off of Schuylkill Peak ran across the creek in Poverty Gulch, wiping out the approach route that people often use to access safer tree skiing in that area. The slide off of Climax Chutes put debris across the Nordic track on Mike's Mile. The avalanche off of Ruby Peak ran well into low angle terrain that's a popular play spot for snowmobilers on a powder day. Avalanche sizes will only be getting larger, at least in the areas that haven't already flushed. Second, we still haven't seen a widespread cycle on these layers below tree line. We know the structure is poor and we've seen quite a few slides this week hinting that we are near the tipping point. With the stormy outlook, I suspect people will be flocking to that type of terrain for their powder turns. Roadways that cross under these below treeline slopes are also on my radar this week, such as the slopes above Peanut Lake Road, the slopes below Snodgrass on your way to Gothic, and the terrain above Cement Creek Road. You can get hit from above if you're walking the dog out for a Nordic ski or riding a snowmobile up a road. Anyone venturing into the mountains should check the forecast and bring avalanche gear. The snowpack is exceptionally tricky and dangerous this season, and we are going into one of the biggest loading events of the year. It's a good time to take a big, cautious step backwards from your normal backcountry routine and closely evaluate your terrain choices, including overhead hazards, before you leave the house. <laughs>